This video is about cryptographic hashing. A cryptographic hash function is a function that takes data of arbitrary size as input. It maps the input to a bit array of fixed size. This output value is often called hash value or simply hash. In the remainder of this video we will use the letter h to denote a hash function. Note that hash functions are deterministic, the same input always gets mapped to the same output. If we find two input values that are mapped to the same hash, we say that we found a collision. Note that collisions always exist, since a hash function maps values from an infinite domain to a finite domain. A hash function is called collision-resistant if it is difficult to find any such collision. Secondly, the inversion of a hash function is the problem of finding an input that gets mapped to a given value. A hash function is called one-way if it is easy to compute but hard to invert. Both the one-way and collision-resistant properties can be phrased as computational problems. We can now show that if we can invert a hash function we can also find a collision. To see this let us choose some random value and compute the hash of it. If we invert the function using this hash, it is highly likely that we get a new value that is different from the one we started with. This is because there are infinitely many potential inputs to the hash function. It is thus highly unlikely that we obtain the same input again. This leaves us with a collision and thus proves the reduction. Next, we present an interesting result that ties back to complexity theory. Namely, we can prove that the existence of one-way functions implies that p is not equal to np. Let's assume that there exists a hash function that is one way. We can define a decision problem that outputs true if an input exists that starts with a given prefix and hashes to a given value, in this case 42. Clearly, if we have access to a solution to the decision problem, namely a value whose hash is 42, we can verify it in polynomial time. Thus the decision problem we created is in NP. Let's assume that the decision problem is also in P. This means that we can try both possible first bits of the pre-image of B9, and compute in polynomial time what the right one is. We could repeat by computing the decision problem for the second bit, the third bit and so on, until we have reconstructed the entire pre-image and thus have inverted the hash function in polynomial time. However, we initially assumed that the hash function was one way, and we thus reach a contradiction, proving that this decision problem is not in P. Thus we have found a decision problem that is in NP but not in P, meaning that P is not equal to NP. Of course we do not know whether P is equal to NP, and so we know even less whether one-way functions exist. However, in practice that does not deter us from using them and they are ubiquitous in modern cryptography. Many families of cryptographic hash functions exist, the most famous ones being the secure hash algorithm or SHA for short. SHA-256 is a member of the SHA-2 family and outputs a 256-bit value for each input. Other constructions such as RIPMED, Blake and MD exist. Collisions for the MD5 and SHA-1 hash functions can be found quite easily, and thus these hash functions are not considered to be secure any longer. Now let us look at a crypto primitive where hash functions are valuable. We introduce message authentication codes, or MAC for short. We look at the example where Alice and Bob are exchanging a ciphertext using symmetric key encryption. Alice can use a Mac to prove the authenticity and integrity of the ciphertext to Bob, and do so more efficiently than when using digital signatures. First, a shared key different from the one used for encryption must be established. Then, by hashing the shared key concatenated with the ciphertext, the message authentication code is computed. When Bob receives both the ciphertext and the MAC from Alice, he can recompute this hash and compare it with the bit string he received. If both bit strings match, Bob can be sure that no one tampered with the ciphertext he received from Alice. Let us summarize what we have learned in this video. We have seen that cryptographic hash functions should be easy to compute but hard to invert, and it should be difficult to find collisions. We have seen that the existence of one-way hash functions would entail that p is not equal to np. Finally, we have learned how hash functions are used for message authentication codes. Thank you for watching this video.